you wait for 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay, so uh, welcome to our uh, uh, seminar. And uh, today will uh, we'll be the third and last lecture by Edin Wang from MIT. Uh, Edin, please uh, start the lecture. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So uh, today I will keep on uh, telling you more stories about this regular side of the random conformal geometry and uh, just re recall what we said uh, in lecture one, where we talked mainly about codal SLE, and when taking kappa go to zero, we look at this large deviation, it gives rise to uh, codal Lovner energy. And those curves are more regular than those fractal SLE. And in the case of a multipodal SLE, uh, they give rise to multipodal energy and potential. And second lecture, we generalize the Lovner energy to loops and they are more naturally correspond to SLE loops. And we saw some interplay uh, between the loop Lovner energy with Dirichlet energy of functions living on the complex plane. And that is, uh, in, is an analogous uh, result uh, to SLE GFF couplings. Um, and uh, I showed a dictionary how one can translate uh, objects from random conformal geometry to the finite energy world. Although all the proofs uh, in the finite energy world don't go through uh, SLE world, um, but there is a very close uh, translation from one to the other. And I just want to, uh, for today's purpose, uh, to recall that the loop Lovner energy is a quantity defined for Jordan curves and it is a quantity that is non-negative and is zero if and only if the curve is a circle. And this is a quantity that is Möbius invariant. And you are allowed to do translation and inversion of the complex plane and scale uh, the complex plane. The curve you obtain has always the same allotment energy. And today we will uh, talking about another large deviation regime of SLU by letting kappa go to infinity. And inside this uh, SLE growth, uh, the energy we'll call the lovner kruvarev energy. And uh, the object that the minimizing uh, energy that it would be uh, some uniform uh, measure for a uniform measure and uh, the objects on the minimizer side you will see will be a, a family of uh, circles, concentric circles that grows from, uh, shrinks from infinity uh, to zero. And we are going to see uh, this part of the story. And for a finite energy, a uh, finite lovner kruvarev energy, the object that we correspond to it is called a foliation of the Peterson quasi circle. So the Peterson quasi circle is the same, uh, same thing as saying a Jordan curve has finite lovner energy. This is an if and only if statement. And just can, you can just think of about the Peterson point circle as finite energy loop. So the first question uh, or the story started um, is about we wonder what happened when kappa goes to infinity. So to talk about the large deviation, maybe the first thing one should understand is what is the limit. Uh, the limit is always the energy minimizer. Of the, if there's a large deviation principle, then the limit has to be the minimizer. In the codal SLE setup, uh, I just recall uh, the codal of the equation is given um, by solving this uh, differential uh, equation, stochastic differential equation, where you have the input, with, which is the Brownian motion times square root of kappa. And this is a um, differential equation where it's time homogeneous uh, in the sense that, um, so it, you, can, you can follow it uh, look, looking at where this uh, GT of Z goes uh, only based on uh, where you, you are looking at your point uh, where it is. And uh, well, it's, it's not time homogeneous in the sense that the WT depends on T, but that is uh, all it's about. Um, but this vector field uh, has a singularity at 
uh, where this driving function is, so wt is here, so this vector field is uh, going to infinity when you get close to this singularity. And when you are away from this uh, singularity, it's very small. And especially it's zero at infinity. And uh, the differential equation starts with the origin, uh, initial condition for being uh, g naught z equal to z. And the way uh, we define the codal SLE is to look at first define tau z to be the maximal solution time. So since there's a singularity, it will at uh, some point will have to will hit this singularity within finite time. And uh, this is the time where it hits the singularity is called tau z. It depends on z. And if we look at all the points uh, which hit the singularity before time t, this is denoted by kt. And for those who haven't hit the singularity before time t, they form a uh, domain ht. And ht can be shown to be a simply connected domain. And moreover, gt is a uh, conformal map from ht to uh, the upper half plane. When kappa is greater than eight, uh, kt is given by a space fitting curve uh, in the sense that you can find a space fitting curve gamma so that this kt is equal to the union of uh, its set uh, gamma from time zero to t. And this is uh, shown by uh, Stefan and Odette. So here I just draw an example of a space fitting. It's supposed to fill up all the bubbles here um, of gamma t. Now we let kappa goes to infinity, and uh, what is what happens? So when kappa goes to infinity, uh, this driving function will oscillate uh, very um, widely and dramatically. And if I start with a point z, uh, its time, its flow will will depend on where your uh, driving function is during a time, time from zero to t. But if your driving function is really a very far away from this point, this vector field is almost zero. Uh, so uh, within a finite time, uh, this GT will move uh, very little. And it's actually easy to check when kappa goes to zero for a fixed T and for a fixed Z, uh, this function, a GT of Z converges just to Z. Uh, so in some sense that uh, GT for each kappa, it is a conformal map from a domain that is uh, strictly included in the upper half plane, but in the limit, it will be just be the identity function. So it's not very interesting uh, for this limit. Uh, in the thesis of Vincent Bafaha, he tries to um, renormalize uh, this function gt in a certain way so that you can see some non-trivial thing happen. Um, but that was not a conformal uh, normalization, but it's also interesting. But we, we, I'm not going to talk about that. Um, so here the issue is not really because your upper half plane is a unbounded domain. It's more because of uh, the normalization is at the boundary point. So here the normalization is uh, the vector field is zero at infinity. Um, so however, if your driving function gets close to this boundary point, uh, is going to be too much emphasized, um, amplified uh, when it gets to the uh, boundary point. So uh, if we want to talk about uh, kappa goes to infinity in a more interesting way, uh, the remedy we took uh, is to consider a radial Lovna chain. And uh, this is starting uh, with joint work with uh, Frederick Bickland and also another uh, joint work with uh, uh, Maurice N and Min J Park. Here, uh, just recall what is Lovner radial chain? It's doing the same thing as the caudal Lovner chain, that now the driving function uh, is a function that's living on the circle, uh, moving with time. And uh, the domain will be the disk. And we also look at a Lovner differential equation in this form. And here, this is a vector field which depends only on uh, zeta t, where it is also, which is also a singularity for this vector field. And uh, it has a factor gt. So uh, it, the vector field is zero at, at origin. And uh, here, this is an illustration about how the vector field looks like. 
is zero here, it is also a zero here. Um, it's a singularity here and it's pushing away uh, along the circle. And with the same uh, initial condition, uh, g not c equals to c. And we define the same way uh, tau t to be the maximal solution time, kt to be the point where it's uh, swallowed by the driving function before time t, and dt is the complement of that. And in this way, uh, now gt, it becomes a conformal map uh, from dt where it is still defined, gt, uh, onto uh, the unit disk with the normalization to be gt fixed zero and gt prime equals to uh, e to the power t. So this is a, a, a radial Lovna chain. The radial SLE is to when we take the driving function to be a Brownian motion on the circle, which is uh, just means the exponential of i b kappa t. Or you want you can also replace uh, by square root uh, b t. It just uh, wrapping around a uh, Brownian motion on the real line, but wrap it around uh, the circle. And now, uh, so again, for, with, with this radio SLE, uh, there's the same uh, phase transition when kappa greater than eight, uh, the curve is becoming space belly. Uh, we are interested in the case when kappa goes to infinity. And here is a heuristic uh, computation. We just look at how GT moves uh, when time goes from T to T plus delta T. By uh, the Lovna equation, uh, it, it should be written as uh, the integral from t to t plus delta t. So this is the vector field. And uh, as above here is just uh, the driving function uh, zeta t. But uh, I just changed this notation to be an integral on the circle, but with respect to the Dirac mass at the point of your driving function. All right, this should be uh, zeta. Um, this should be a zeta here. And uh, then integrate with time t. And uh, if we take delta t to be really small, this is, uh, you look at how much gs uh, moved, gs moved also by very uh, little time, uh, by very little distance. Um, because you, you, you just have to look at how your vector field is. And uh, if your point is inside the domain, um, you, with, no matter where your driving function, where your singularity you put, uh, the, the vector field can be uh, G, at Gs of Z can be controlled. So it moves by uh, very little. And we just uh, do this naive thing, uh, just to replace all the S to be T. So now this is. And now uh, we look at what is this uh, equation says that, so now here, these functions does not depend on um, the time s anymore. So what you have is to integrating uh, the Dirac mass at the Brownian motion and with respect to time. And uh, what you obtain is in fact, the same thing as if I integrating this function as a function of zeta with respect to the Brownian occupation measure. So this is, uh, or Brownian local time. Uh, this is a Brownian local time. Uh, this is a typo. Uh, so the difference between the local time of uh, the Brownian motion uh, with diffusivity kappa at time t and uh, at time t plus delta t. All right, and in this case, when a kappa goes to zero, uh, goes to infinity, uh, this uh, local time is always, so it's always a probability measure. Uh, so for this uh, measure that you integrate, so these are the total measure of it will be delta t. And um, it's not hard to see that when kappa goes to infinity, uh, this local time has to be, con has to converge to just the uniform measure on the circle. So 
multiplied by delta t, this is the total, total measure. So now our equation becomes um, that gt, uh, variation of gt is delta t time uh, this integral. And by Cauchy formula, um, Cauchy integral that you, you have that, you have gt equal to delta t uh, times gt of z. And now this is a differential equation and you can solve it, uh, you obtain that gt is just uh, exponential t times z. So how does it look like? Um, so this is gt is a map from uh, dt to d. And so here it just says that dt is the disk of radius exponential minus t. And gt, what gt is doing is just a scaling. This is what happened in the limit. And um, this should not be surprising as if you think again about what is SLE doing, SLE is like putting a singularity at this point and this point moves uh, very fast when kappa goes to infinity. And in the end, you're, as a point from inside, you will not see where your driving function is. You just see it as a uniform measure on the circle. And it's also, the picture should be isotropic and your conformal map will just be everywhere uh, the same scaling. This is the limiting picture. And we will be especially interested uh, in those family that I draw this circle. These are the boundary of the domain DT. And this also gives us the motivation to consider the measure-driven Lovner chain and, or it's called a lovner kufarev equation. Uh, so if, if there are questions, uh, you can just, uh, interrupt me. Are there any questions? So here is a, just a heuristic. It's not a proof. Uh, it's almost a proof. But, uh... All right, for the lovna kofarev uh, equation, the setup is following. Uh, we consider the set n plus, uh, these are the set of Borel measures uh, with marginal. Uh, so this Borel measure on the cylinder uh, S1 times R plus. So this is uh, where the driving function lives, this circle, and this is the time parameter. And we ask this measure to have the marginal to the second uh, variable to be just the Lebesgue measure. If you start with such a Borel measure, then uh, you, you can do the disintegration. So instead of looking at the measure rho, uh, it's the same as look at the measurable family uh, uniquely defined uh, T almost everywhere uh, to be a family of probability measure on the circle denoted by rho T. And the lovna kufarev equation is uh, just replace uh, the vector singular vector field by this vector field uh, integrated over uh, with respect to this measure rho T. So here we have already seen one example. This is the vector field here, where rho t is the uniform measure. And the same way you define tau t, dt, and kt. Uh, for the lovna kufarev uh, equation, uh, one can show, so this uh, has to be classical, uh, but if you want to look at a uh, detailed proof that you can find uh, in a uh, paper, joint paper with uh, that of uh, Friedrich and uh, Alan Sola and Amanda Turner, or uh, in the QLE, the quantum of net evolution paper by uh, Miller Sheffield. And the following is the continuity of the Lovner transform. That is the map from the, the this set of measures with satisfying this property to uh, the conformal map F. So this F is defined as a function on the solid cylinder uh, is, so for FT is the pre-image, uh, is the inverse map of GT. So this is a map from D to D. And uh, T is time. So if, if we just uh, consider F as the function of uh, both variable defined by GT inverse of Z, um, 
and endowed with the space of those functions with the uniform convergence on compact. So there's not only uniform convergence on the disk, but also compact set uh, on the time interval. And if we endow uh, this function with this topology and we endow uh, the space of uh, N plus with the weak convergence on compact, this is weak convergence for measures. And then this is a homomorphism. Uh, in other way, uh, for other way to describe the topology on F, uh, one also called it this uniform uh, convergence on compact for the character theory convergence of a uh, Lovna chain. But uh, more precisely, it just means that uh, this conformal map uh, in both variables uh, is converging uniformly on compact. Uh, so once you have a homomorphism, uh, it's very nice uh, to talk about a convergence result and uh, about large deviation. Um, so everything you can talk about about large deviation on one side automatically translate to the large deviation to the right hand side. If you look about uh, take the corresponding topology. And for large deviation principle, you need the topology because uh, it is stated for open set, for closed set, for interior, for closure. So it depends strongly on the topology but actually only depends on the measure and the topology. So uh, we want to talk about the large deviation of SLE infinity, uh, its surface to look at large deviation on the measure on N. And um, so if you look at the, uh, this heuristic again, coming back to here. If we want to think about the large deviation of SLE, we look at this equation. Uh, it is the same as if looking at the large deviation of the Brownian local time as a process uh, parameterized by T. But this is a uh, very convenient uh, once we have this uh, homeomorphism. So uh, let's just first uh, describe what this is a large deviation rate function. It is defined for a measure inside uh, the space N where whose uh, disintegration are all probability measures. The lovna kufarev energy denoted by this S of rho is defined as the integral of L of rho t, where L of rho t is defined as one, uh, the Dirichlet energy of the square root of the density of this rho t. Okay, we write rho t as nu t squared d theta, and the rho L of uh, rho t is uh, simply the Dirichlet energy of this nu t. And if uh, your measure rho t is not uh, absolute continuous with respect to uh, the Lebesgue measure, that you just take uh, this Kufarev uh, L of rho t to be infinity. So for instance, if uh, rho t is Dirac mass, then it's infinity automatically. If you start with a uh, rho that is a Brownian motion, a Dirac mass on Brownian motion is also infinity. Um, so it is finite really on a quite regular measure. And the other observation is that this energy is zero if and only if for each of rho t, uh, it is the uniform measure on S1. It is they are all zero and uh, is zero only if uh, new t prime is zero and this measure has to be constant. So um, the way we view SLE kappa on the radio SLE kappa is the Lovna transform under the Lovna Kufarev equation driven by this measure. So uh, here, this measure, now this is a measure, this delta direct mass at the Brownian motion uh, times this dt. And um, to study the large deviation of SLE, we just study from the homeomorphism uh, between the, of the lambda transform, uh, we just study the large deviation of this measure as a measure that I denote by rho kappa. Uh, this measure is, this random measure is large deviation. And this is uh, 
the recent work with Minjie and the Morris, uh, it, it's in, uh, in JP, that we show that this lovna kufarev energy is the large division rate function of the radio as L kappa, as kappa goes to infinity. And more precisely, it means that if you take a uh, any set in this n plus, then uh, its interior, you take uh, one over kappa uh, of log of this probability uh, is greater than infimum of rho inside the interior of A of this uh, rate function. And this is a, a trivial inequality of the, now we replace the interior of A by a closure of A. And this probability asymptotic has to be bounded from above by minus infinity of all the rho belong to the closure of A of its uh, uh, energy. So this is a, a just translating what is this large division rate uh, means it's uh, for all the LDP it, it's the same meaning. All right, so that's the uh, at large division result about SLE infinity. So we can see that uh, in this case, also we have a regularizing phenomenon that happens. That is, uh, if you look at finite energy uh, measures, then it's much smoother than SLE itself. It's absolutely continuous, and uh, for each time t, it's absolutely continuous measure. And then the next question is to how can we um, describe uh, this class, uh, this Lovner chain driven by a finite Lovner Kofar uh, energy measure? And um, for this, we are going to. I'm going to give you a description about it uh, in a more symmetric uh, setup. So that is the whole plan lovna kuparov chain. So before we are looking at the lovna kuparov chain in the, in the unit disk, where you obtain a family of uh, dt, which is when t naught is the, just the unit disk. And uh, when t get larger, you, you shrink towards uh, the standard. In the case of a concentric circle, you have really a concentric circle shrinking to zero. And for the whole plan of my chain, it will, give me, it will give you a family of simply connected domain that is very large at the beginning. So it's actually coming from infinity and uh, shrinks towards zero. And uh, it is not much different than the radio one. Uh, you can view this this way. Uh, we define a row be a measure uh, defined on the infinite cylinder on two sides by infinite cylinder that is S1 times R. And you have the disintegration such that each of them, there are probability measure on the circle, and but now time is parameterized by R. You get a, a family of simply connected DT and uh, the corresponding conform map GT will still satisfy uh, it fix zero and its derivative as zero equal to exponential T. And now T can take a negative value. And uh, such that, uh, this is a family of uh, GT and DT, such that if you just look at uh, one uh, interface here, like DT, I map the inside of DT to the unit disk. Uh, this inside curves uh, are mapped to some inside curves of DT, of the unit disk. And this family of shrinking simply connected domain is the radial of Nukovarov chain uh, driven by the measure uh, starting from row S. So uh, one can show that there is a unique uh, family of row uh, DT such that this property is satisfied for all the time S. So if you don't feel comfortable with uh, uh, infinite time, the by infinite time the Lovna chain, you can just think about the case of the uh, unit disk, but uh, in the, uh, on the outside, there are just all concentric circle, which will correspond to the case where for rho t, when t is negative, uh, to be the uniform measure. That is a uh, one case of the whole plan of the chain. Uh, and now we try to answer the question, uh, what happened when uh, the lovna kufarev energy is finite? The lovna kufarev energy is defined in a similar way to be the integral of uh, L of rho t dt. Uh, 
uh, maybe it's good to recall that uh, L of rho t, this is one half integral of S1 nu t prime square d theta if rho t equal to nu t square d theta. It's the same definition as before, but now we are taking the time also integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in the uh, upcoming paper with Frederick, we are going to show, uh, we show that if the energy Kufar, the Kufar of energy is finite, then for every T, uh, the boundary of DT is a Bay Peterson quasi circle. And moreover, the union of all those uh, curves, it covers the whole uh, complex plane, except zero. Is the shrinking is never visited. And moreover, um, there exists a uh, parameterization of the this boundary such that uh, T2, this boundary is continuous uh, for this soup norm. This is some continuity about T. So in this way, uh, we just say that um, it gen rho generates a foliation of this two punctured sphere by uh, the Peterson quality circles. It just means uh, what is written here that each of the leaves uh, is a Bay Peterson quality circle and their union is this uh, two punctured sphere and they move in a continuous way. All right, so this is. Uh, so or now um, the picture you can have in mind, for instance, is this one. Uh, this curve, uh, this fake Peterson quality circle, uh, they're not C1. They can be a little bit fractal, but still uh, they can have some spiral, but still they're rectifiable. Uh, they have a finite length. Um, and um, they're rectifiable. So uh, there's a classical result that says that if you have a rectifiable, a rectifiable curve, then almost everywhere, our plans almost everywhere, uh, there is a well-defined tangent. And now we are going to introduce a notion called the winding function, phi. Uh, phi is the angle uh, between the tangent at this point Z uh, of your foliation and uh, the circle that is uh, centered at zero and uh, um, passing through Z. And we can zoom in. Uh, so phi is just uh, this angle. All right, so what is this phi uh, telling you? Phi is telling you how far you, you are deviating from uh, the concentric circle at zero. And also remind that uh, the concentric circle is this uh, foliation that is generated by the zero energy measure. So zero energy measure, uh, they're just concentric circle. In the unit disk is the case, and in the whole plane is, is the same. All right, so phi is uh, zero uh, everywhere if and only if uh, you come from uh, zero energy foliation, a foliation generated by zero energy function. And our next result, uh, it shows the following. Say this 16 times of, of the lovna kufarev energy equals to the Dirichlet energy of this winding function. And I hear I recall that uh, Dirichlet energy equals to one over pi of the gradient square integral over the whole plane. And the statement is actually uh, say that uh, each one, if you this one, this guy is finite, uh, then the winding function is has finite Dirichlet energy, and uh, uh, if if the winding function is well defined and uh, it is in it has finite Dirichlet energy, then the measure has to be uh, has finite lovna kufarev energy. So they can both be infinite, or if one is finite, both have to be finite, and uh, so uh, here, this is a result that is uh, describing the, giving you a static uh, description 
of this Lovna Kovarev energy. So the Lovna Kovarev energy, so if you're looking at just the foliation and you want to compute its uh, Lovna Kovarev energy, a priori you have to consider all the conformal maps GT uh, from inside of GT to, that, uh, to the unit disk and look at what differential equation is satisfied, try to cover, recover what is this measure. Um, you have to look at a lot of conformal map at the same time and to, in order to get an idea what is, uh, what is this uh, measure role. But on the right-hand side, uh, it's actually telling you that this Levin Kufarev energy is actually can be described in, a, in purely geometric term. And you just uh, tell, that each, at each point, how far is my leaf uh, deviate from being uh, the circle pathing with centered at zero, looking at this winding function and look at Dirichlet energy. And uh, this result is actually inspired by uh, SLE duality. So uh, this winding function uh, is, um, closely related to the Lovna energy, which is uh, the SLE zero large deviation rate function. And uh, in the last uh, lecture, I was explaining there are several ways to express the Lovna energy of a Jordan curve in terms of Dirichlet energy of uh, something related to uh, log of F prime or its winding, etc. cetera. But uh, one can think of uh, the on the right hand side is more about the Lovna energy. And especially how the Lovna energy is coupled with the Gaussian fee field uh, or the large deviation of the Gaussian fee field that is in the, sitting on the background. Uh, but on the left hand side, this S of rho that is giving you the large deviation when kappa go to plus, uh, go to infinity. And uh, this 16 is actually compatible uh, with the uh, 16 in the SLE duality. But uh, however, uh, I'm going to tell you the key steps in the proof and all the proofs is, uh, does not involve SLE and GSA. Somehow it's also uh, the way that uh, if I never managed to compute the uh, with pi factors in the constant, uh, this is a way that I'm sure that we get the correct uh, factor. An example. We have seen already the measure is just the uniform measure. You just get the circles that shrink to zero, concentric, concentric circles shrinking to zero. And now we can consider another measure which can actually vanish at uh, some point. It's always vanish at one and uh, it's time homogeneous and uh, it's in this form. This is actually uh, the measure with smallest uh, L value. Uh, among all the measures which vanish at, at one. And we just take this measure uh, this way and when for t belong to zero and one and to be uniform measure otherwise. So this is uh, an example. It's the foliation that you see here. It's uh, when the measure is zero, the foliation doesn't, does not move. It stays uh, put here and all the other points it foliates uh, to our inside. And at time y, you reach this circle. And uh, if you keep going with the uniform measure, uh, in the unit desk, you just get the you know, concentric circle. But in this case, uh, so it's the image of concentric circle. Uh, so there are actually the equipotentials uh, standard at zero and you get this foliation. Maybe you see clearer this way. And so mean to it. On the right-hand side is plotted the a uh, winding function uh, value of phi. And uh, here, these colors are more or less zero. And uh, these are negative values. These are positive values. And uh, uh, one can check uh, directly that also this energy duality holds. This is, uh, this, was, this is what we call energy duality. This uh, is, again, compute explicitly both sides. But even in this very simple case that uh, computing the Dirichlet energy of the winding function is not completely trivial because uh, actually the gradient of phi has a singularity at this point. But it's doable. 
So it's another way that we check our formula is correct. Okay, before uh, I'm not probably don't have the time to go to the proof, but let me talk about the uh, consequence. First is the energy reversibility. Now, if I have a foliation generated by a finite energy row, and uh, now I have this uh, foliation, and I have a winding function phi, I just apply a component map one over z, where, which interchange zero and infinity. Now the orange curve there outside, um, the blue curve there inside, a uh, green curve is here. Um, it is, uh, if you apply this inversion, the circle center at zero will be still a circle center at zero. And this inversion is conformal, which preserves angles. So the winding function is actually preserved. So the winding function on the right hand side by tilde is equal to phi uh, composed with one over z. And if there, okay, so, so here you have a foliation and uh, it's in, when you, after you reverse it, uh, it's still a foliation, there is a measure uh, rho tilde uh, associated to it. And because of that, this S of rho tilde equal to a Dirichlet energy of phi up to a factor of 16, uh, we actually obtain that the uh, Lavnikovarev energy of rho and the Lavnikovarev energy of rho tilde, they're equal. And uh, this is, once we have the energy duality, this is a one-line proof um, of it. And if I wanted to comment on this uh, result uh, from a SLE perspective, uh, one may think about Lavnikovarev energy as uh, describing large kappa behavior of SLE. And uh, the SLE reversibility for kappa greater than eight uh, in this radio setup uh, is not proved and not known. Uh, it should, could be true or not, and I don't have an opinion on that, but at least uh, our result here uh, it is a result which cannot be deduced by the current, uh, even heuristically by the current uh, result on SLE reversibility. If you still remember in the first lecture, I talked about the proof of a uh, a code of the energy, the reversibility that was based on the reversibility of SLE with small kappa. Um, but here we have a very simple proof for the Levin-Kovarev energy to be reversible as well. Okay, the next question is to relate uh, this Levin-Kovarev energy to a Levin energy of one curve. So Lovna-Kovarev energy always comes with a whole bunch of uh, Vay Peterson quality circle, and this is uh, defined for one Vay Peterson quality circle. Uh, this theorem is the following. Uh, if we construct, uh, if I'm given this curve gamma, and I complete it into a foliation by the equipotentials from inside and outside. By equipotential, I mean, uh, the in, you just look at the image of the concentric circle by this conformal map from inside and also a concentric circle from the conformal map to the outside. This is a, a well-defined foliation and it gives rise to a certain measure uh, rho gamma. The theorem is that the Levin energy plus uh, some, uh, fun some log of a derivative of H is the conformal map outside and divided by F prime at zero equals to the Levin Kufarev energy of this particular uh, driving measure. And especially the reason we're taking this equipotential is so that uh, the winding function phi is harmonic outside of the curve. Okay, so this is a relation at which relates the Levna Kufarev energy to the Levna energy. Maybe this is more clo is closer to one would have thought about SLE duality which says that the outer boundary of SLE 16 over kappa uh, is locally like a SLE kappa curve. This is, um, so, yeah. Re one remark is that uh, this guy is a Mobius invariant. So it is zero whenever you have a circle. But this guy uh, is zero only you have the curve uh, only the circle is centered at zero. Uh, for instance, in this example, we have also an interface, which is a circle, which has left the energy zero, but uh, the S energy of rho is not zero. 
So uh, therefore, this term is uh, has to be there. Uh, uh, also, from the Lebner Kofarov uh, equation, there are two marked points that's very special: is zero and infinity, and uh, these are actually captured here. Um, the other thing is that one can actually check that this guy is always non-negative. So uh, we obtain uh, immediately uh, the next result, uh, glory, that the Lovner energy of gamma is bounded by 16 times of uh, any Lovner Kofarov energy, any measure with finite Lovner Kofarov energy generating gamma as a as a as a leaf. Um, also, we, we get a, a characterization about a Bay Peterson quasi circle. That is, a Jordan curve separating zero and infinity is a Bay Peterson quasi circle if and only if gamma can be realized as a leaf uh, in the foliation generated by finite energy measure. And um, so this one side is we, the very beginning, we said if this energy is finite, uh, all the leaves are Bay Peterson. And this result says that if you have a Vay-Peterson curve, uh, you can actually find such a measure which gamma is a leaf of it. And we have the bound. So if you start with a foliation, uh, you find an NG row, all the leaves actually, no, not only you know they're Vay-Peterson, but you also know that all the Lovner energy has to be bounded by the 16th of S of row. So if one asks me about, uh, how can you generate uh, a Bay Peterson quasi circle with Lovner energy below uh, 100? Uh, here, this is way you just take a corresponding row with a bounded energy divided by 16, 100 over 16, and uh, then you generate uh, solve your Lovner equation. Then you get the whole evolution family of domains, and you look at its boundary. It will be a Bay Peterson quasi circle with energy less than 100, as you asked. And not only you get one, you have infinitely many of them uh, at the same time. So here, this is a, a, a screenshot from a Chris uh, paper on the characterization of the Peterson quality circles. And uh, we have been talking about these two, uh, Lovner energy, large deviation of the zero plus, and now we are adding a new one for being a leaf in a Lovner chain to run by a finite Lovner Kofarov energy measure. Uh, so maybe just let me just uh, spend two minutes in, in the key step of the proof uh, of this main result. This is the main result, the, the 16 times the Lovner Kofarov energy equals the Dirichlet energy of the winding function. So the guiding philosophy is that um, Dirichlet energy is a quantity that is conformally invariant. And whenever you have a conformally invariant quantity, it's very nice to plug in into a Lovner chain. As it happened to conformally invariant random systems uh, in studying uh, univalent functions, and uh, Lovner chain is a very powerful tool uh, to kind of help you to explore uh, your object. So here, our idea is that if we have a row generating a foliation and you have another function phi, has nothing to do first uh, with rho, with the foliation, which has finite Dirichlet energy, at each time t, you can decompose uh, this energy into two parts, which is the one is has zero trace inside dt, and the other part is the harmonic part. Uh, the rest of, apart from that, they're orthogonal for the Dirichlet inner product, and this guy is harmonic inside dt and coincide with phi outside of dt. And when t goes up, um, dt shrinks. And uh, this guy, the harmonic part, will uh, converge to phi. It will cover, discover more and more. Um, but this thing, if you just stop at time t, what you see is a uh, it can be some wild function outside, but inside is really smooth. It's a harmonic function. And when I evolve with time t, it's kind of uh, decomposing my phi into different layers of harmonic function. And the phi can be obtained by piling up uh, those harmonic functions. Uh, so to make this precise, 
uh, we uh, constructed this integration isolum tree that you called IOTA, that if you have a function with finite Dirichlet energy, uh, we consider this map, IOTA defined this way, which depends on T and theta. And um, intuitively what IOTA is doing, that is if T is zero, it, here you don't, if T is just the identity, what you have here is just a normal derivative of phi at, at zero at the boundary of the unit disk. And um, if for different T, what you do is you look at um, this zero part and uh, you push it onto the unit disk and look at normal derivative. But since our boundary is not always smooth and you, it doesn't really make sense to talk about the normal derivative, that's why there's has a quite uh, complicated form. But our result says that this iota of, of Dirichlet function on the unit disk with zero trace, it's actually isometry uh, to the cylinder of when you end up with the measure rho. So here iota depends on rho because uh, it depends on how you foliate or decompose your uh, Dirichlet function, how you can decompose into the layers. Um, but it is really an isometry and it's a bijective isometry uh, from, from the Dirichlet energy to L2 of the cylinder. This is uh, the way that we are combining the lambda evolution to decompose your function with finite Dirichlet energy into layers, and then we push it layers onto the cylinder, um, which is very clean and neat way to, to write down. And we also have the inverse operator of this iota. You start with a function u, and uh, uh, you can recover it by piling up some uh, harmonic function. And I don't get into, into detail here, but um, this is the rough idea. A, a very interesting thing that one we are looking into is that since this isometry, one can just plug in the corresponding Gaussian measure that's corresponding to those. On the left-hand side, you get zero trace, uh, get usually Gaussian fee field. And on the right-hand side, you get the white noise on the cylinder. And we believe there's a lot of thing to discover uh, there as well. And this isometry hold, uh, holds a very weak assumption on rho. And this decomposition of Gaussian fee field into white noise decomposition has been observed in a work by uh, Fuken Hedelman and Niminen. And the end of the proof uh, is using this iota. Uh, we just show that if you take the winding function, then iota has this particular form, and we, which you check directly that this iota has L2 norm equal to 16 of the 16 times Dirichlet energy, uh, 16 of the Lovnikov Farrev energy of rho. And by the isometry, this is also equal to the Dirichlet energy which uh, established the link. Okay, so uh, that is uh, all I want to say. And uh, there's some other thing, but uh, yeah. Thank you, sorry for running over time. Uh, okay. Thank you for giving this talk. Are there any questions? Okay, I guess so, I can ask one question. Okay. Uh, so, so I just wondered if there are any like chordal versions of these stories that you are that you are discussing here. Uh, yeah, uh, this is an interesting question. And uh, um, so you mean for the finite energy or for the large deviation? Uh, I guess I guess both. Uh, I get yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so what in the chordal setup uh, is here, uh, we think the most uh, natural the, in the limit one, one should see is uh, the, the rising horizon. It has to, like, because um, when kappa goes to infinity, there's no point, Z shouldn't be, X shouldn't be very different than X plus one. You, you take no time to go from X from X plus one and you start your rounding motion there and uh, the picture you, you get in the end should be translation invariant. And uh, so there are several things that uh, we don't know how to do. So first of all, if 
the most natural thing would be the measure will be supported on the whole real line. And the case of a uh, rising horizon corresponds to case where the measure is the Lebesgue measure, which is infinite measure. Um, and then to talk about uh, the Lovna measure driven Lovna chain um, support for measure support with infinite measure supported on an infinite line that is, uh, we, I don't know how to do it. Uh, but there might be other ways. Uh, for instance, you can take this. Uh, here we are looking at case of actually two punctured sphere. You can also apply Mobius transformation in a clever way to merge these two points. That should be uh, the case you are going to see. So we believe that uh, in the in the case, in the quadal case, we can you can also you also have a version of the whole plane where you allow the capacity to be negative. Um, so the starting point and end point uh, is the same one, and uh, the picture you see there should be the foliation. So this is the zero energy foliation that I draw. It should grow. And uh, okay, I don't know how to draw it, but but you get to think about. Um, a small circle gets larger and sweat out your whole sphere and become small circle again, uh, you shrink back. Yeah, so this is actually the limit how it should like. And for large deviation, uh, the energy should also be similar to the one L like I defined. Um, but it's not completely clear how to write down the Lovna equation in the setup uh, driven by infinite measure. Yeah. But it's an interesting question, yeah. So I have a question about the uh, concept of the uh, quasi circle, the uh, very Peterson quasi circle. Mm -hmm. uh, from the table you show, mm -hmm. there are so many uh, definitions. And yeah. uh, it seemed to me that it's clearly a very important uh, concept. But uh, yes. I'm just wondering if there's any uh, concrete way for me to appreciate this uh, concept, like uh, so, just why this is an interesting concept, and uh, yeah, just what are the importance? Um, I I can say that uh, the first occurrence it happens that why people are interested uh, is actually from physicists. Mm -hmm. um, that they are looking at the morphism of the circle because this is mm -hmm. the parameterization group of uh, a closed string. Is it related yeah. to the Virasar algebra? Yeah, also, right. So if you, um, I, I'm not very, I don't, I think there, like you can see similar formula from the Virasar algebra uh, in, in the Peterson metric. Uh, but I'm, I don't think, I, I think that's either a coincidence or because they come from the same computation. So they have the same mm -hmm. form. I can show you, uh, maybe let me see. Um, maybe this one. Oops. Why it dies? Yeah. Okay. Maybe let's just say it. Um. Uh -huh. Uh, first of all, this VP, class of the Peterson quasi circle is a closure of some smooth loop for a certain metric called the Peterson metric. Uh -huh. And the metric, the Peterson metric is only defined for this class of uh, the space of this class of the Peterson quasi circle. So this okay. is the space where it makes sense to talk about the Peterson metric uh, in the unit disk uh -huh. setup. And mm -hmm. next is that this the Peterson metric. Uh, can be written is the unique as uh, it's a certain unique measure which satisfy um, some canonical property that physicists are interested for this metric to be Kähler. Mm -hmm. um, somehow, it's a there's only one such metric up to a scaling. Mm -hmm. So it's so, in that sense, and, uh, so it's you a canonical. Mention that the the physics background also come from string theory. And yeah. uh, is it similar to the real quantum gravity, like also coming from similar kind of string theory? Yeah, so 
I, I, I'm not, I think it's a, a very closely related, but I, I don't feel I really fully understand what is, uh -huh. what is the real link. I think there are a lot of similarities at least. Yeah, okay. and you can see the Verasoro from the expression of the Wade Peterson metric, uh, for instance. Um, do you answer your previous question? Yeah. I see. And uh, also, a follow up question is about this uh, foliation of these uh, quasi circles. And uh, is there like also some uh, concept of intrinsic? interest or it's like uh, uh, having some applications. So you, are, so you have a theorem saying that uh, something is a foliation of the very Peterson quasi circle. Yeah, this, this is a notion that we introduce for a because usually foliation people means foliation it appears a lot in dynamics. And uh, uh -huh. uh, those foliation usually means they're each leaves are smooth already and uh, you can't, um, they're all injected. But uh, it means that each leaves they have to um, stay away from each other. And uh, mm -hmm. so locally, it's a diffeomorphism towards uh, the product of uh, lines mm -hmm. times, lines times uh, intervals. And uh, so that is a, a foliation. I think it appears a lot of place, uh, certain has a lot of work, but this is not the same foliation that we consider. We are, our foliation uh, is, exactly those coming from uh, this finite left of virus energy. Mm -hmm. And it's very specific to this setup of um, two puncture sphere where you have a good description using left uh, equation. And mm -hmm. because of the monotonicity of left equation, then you automatically have the boundary of the domain if there's it's a circle, if it's a Jordan curve, and then you, you have automatically the monotonicity of the Curves. But on the other hand, um, our assumption for the foliation is much weaker. That we you al we allow that curves uh, leaves touching each other and even coincide along a, a big part of it, uh, etc. So I think the, the foliation this way that we describe it is really accommodated to the notion of a love fire of energy. But however, I, I think that in this setup. But we managed to do, um, so all this theorem look like pretty simple to state, but um, because of uh, the regularity of the Wave-Pearson quasi circle, they're not C1. And uh, so there's quite a bit of uh, heavy uh, function analysis machinery getting into it. And even to talk about what is phi, it's only defined almost everywhere on leaves, but mm -hmm. it does not need to define Lebesgue almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, one has to talk about what does it mean to be a Dirichlet energy. So I think we managed to do it in a, with very weak regularity. This is actually the hard part of the work. Uh, but the mm -hmm. concept itself is to really try to give the if and only if uh, characterization uh, here. Okay. Really that one is finite, if and only if the other is finite. I see. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, other questions? 